Hello, welcome to Floyd Models Kit Review Time. Today, something big. It's not a new release, it's actually quite an old one, but it is one of those ones, it's the only one on the market, so I thought we'd have a look. And if you're into Russian heavy metal, the bigger stuff, this is where you want to be. So what we've actually got here is the Russian TU-160 Blackjack Bomber in 170 second scale. So yeah, we're thinking it's like the B1, but actually when you look at this thing next to a B1, this one's a lot more bigger. It's a beast, absolute beast. You can tell by the size of the box, it's huge. And even from the overhead, when you try and squeeze it in down in here, it just about fits my widest angled lens, okay? So you can see it is an absolute monster of a box. So anyway, there's a couple of things on here. We won't run around the outside with too much because I can't fit it all in. Anyway, to give you an idea how big this thing is when it's built, it's going to be 75 centimetres long by 77 centimetres with a wingspan. It's 261 parts in there. It's got metal, it's got photo etch, and obviously it's got all your bits on 19 sprues. So roughly, we can just about get these bits in. We've got a couple down there, obviously, in Federation markings, and we've got a couple other bits going on there as well. Uh, your kit number for this one is number 01620. So if I can get in the box, even the lid is like stupidly massive, you can see straight off the bat by looking in here, it's huge, absolutely massive. Okay, now I've had this kit now quite a while, um, and it's one of those ones where I have every intention of building it one day, all right? But when you look at just the size of this thing, it is absolutely off the chart. Look at it, it's huge. Right, what we need to do is go delving deep because I need instructions. And they're gonna be a tiny little thing just down in here. Right, because of the size of this, I'm gonna pop it on the floor next to me up the bits as and when we need them. Right, so instructions, typical trumpeter instructions, as you can see just down in here like that. What I'm gonna do is, is just try and pull this camera in just a little bit tighter, because I don't think we'll need anything quite as big as that. There we go. So as you can see down on here, we've got the screw call outs for it. Talking about, we've got a little bit of photo etch. We've got some metal rods as well to help beef up the gear. Usual thing, straight into it, into the actual cockpit itself okay so quite detailed we've got nice bits going down in there we've got some photo etch in there for some of the instrument panels things like that adding a lot more detail not sure how much we're going to see but it'll give you an idea as well okay as you can see so we've got the first row and the second row and we've got the car uh, compartment behind the crew as well then it's into that nose wheel section because obviously that's going to bolt underneath the cockpit as you can see those parts going in there as well and as you can see we've got all of these added in strength sections to beef it all up then weirdly we jump straight down into the bomb bay so we've got that type of rotary bomb bay i have to say it was a british design from the buccaneer in the first place uh, and then obviously b1s have it and now obviously you've got the, here the tu uh, 160s have it this rotary uh, rack so we've got cruise missiles down in here Obviously, if you've got your spares box, you could fit it up with pretty much anything. Okay, but that's one's being fitted in and put all the points in there like that. Okay, all of those going in there for the bays, and then obviously you've got the intakes and then the nozzle sections all going together. Again, lots of detail down in there. Control surfaces all going in there. It is all separate, which is really nice with this one. So it is all poseable. So we've got leading edge uh, slats on there. We've actually got the ailerons and we've actually got the flaps as well. Fully poseable and deployable. Okay, same on both sides. Then it's a case of getting this in. So you've got your forward and your aft bomb bays going down in there as well. You've got your wheel wells going down there. We've got the intake areas being fitted in there, forward section and the nose. Again, a little bit modular, so it might be a handful with your seam lines, but hopefully you're gonna be okay. You've got the swing wing system being fitted down in there as well. So we've got these nice tabs in there gonna hold those down into place. Some other smaller parts and little covers being fitted down onto there and the refueling probe up at the top. Uh, those sections going in. Then it's down into the main gear. So again, we've got those uh, metal parts as well, which are gonna beef it up, pick it a lot stronger, and hopefully take some of that weight, because this is gonna be a monster. All the wheels and everything going down in there as well. It looks like the actual tires are going to be rubber. Maybe uh, just have to check that one in there. Bombay doors, intakes being fitted down onto the actual engine sections. Okay, canopy being fitted, refueling probe, you assume it'll be open or closed, whichever way you want to do it. The AOAs uh, and then obviously pitot tubes, things like that, all being fitted down onto there like that. And then obviously you've got the tail planes being fitted in, nozzles going in the back end and things like that. And then finally, the little gloves gonna go on the backs of the wings being fitted in, obviously depending on if you're having swept or if you're having the wings out. To be honest, it doesn't look too bad. Um, yeah, it, it seems quite simple, but then when you see the amount of plastic that is down in here and everything else, you're thinking, is it really, really going to be that simple? 
They call it the white swan and as you can see that's the reason why. Beautiful markings with these ones with the actual white with the grey. Plenty of weathering options in that. I know it might just seem it's white but obviously you're going to break it up quite a lot and we've obviously got the federation markings on those as well so very nice indeed. Then we've got in the decals I'm fighting off man flu at the moment everyone so apologies if I sound a little bit congested okay so if we just slip a blade in we can have a look all right it is the older trumpeter one so sometimes it can be a little bit large and lumpy but actually it doesn't look too bad a uh, good solid color texture on those and we've actually got, got the markings in there in the writing sorry apologies don't speak Russian okay but actually looks pretty good indeed right the bags. I thought there was some photo edge, but that's probably buried somewhere. So let's have a look in here and see what we've got. All right. The best way to attack this beast. Let's start off just down in here. So we've got a little bit of protection on the back end, which is quite nice. So looking straight ahead, the mold itself, I have to say, does look quite agricultural. The way I say that is it doesn't look like it's a perfectly polished mold. We've got some various things. This is obviously a one piece injection molding. We've got some actual injection points here, 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 and here. Okay, we don't see them and at the back. So we've got multiple injection ports. So this, it's not like it's on a sprue. This is it. This is what you end up with. It's just one giant piece. Okay, so you are going to have a little bit of cleanup, but I don't know how well the camera picks it up, but you might be able to see just a little bit of texture. We've got a little bit of marks down in here. You can see this tooling mark to get it out if you can see it around these areas these are tooling these are actually pushing out marks onto this one we've got a little bit of breakage just down in here as well and generally you might see we've got a little bit of flash and various things here on the close-up and if we just run it around you can just see it's just a little bit yeah a little bit it's all there it's very fine details don't get me wrong we've got some very nice stuff going down in here in all of these areas it's just a little bit clunky all right, so this is going to, obviously you're going to, well, good point actually just here. You can probably see how this isn't even straight. So it makes you wonder how that's actually going to join onto the rest of it when that is an awful, awful join on the end there. So you are probably going to have a little bit of fit issues. It's going to be one of those kits where you're not just going to be running in. You're going to be taking your time, dry fitting, test fitting, absolutely everything before you commit to glue. Otherwise you're going to spend your life just filling everything afterwards uh, so we can see it's a 2005 mold we we're saying it's quite an old trumpeter but you know just said it's the only one i'm a great believer when you get these people and they moan about kits and they say about oh it's not this and it's not that and all the rest of it and my oh my answer is always yeah but what else are you going to build because it's the only one okay so this bit here looks just like a stingray is it me? Stingray? Okay. All right. So same thing again. It's in reverse. So it got ejection ports on this one. And again, it's a little bit old school, but actually looking at it, the detail is all here. It's all a good thing. You're just probably going to be thinking about this as, you know, perhaps a very light polish right the way over the plastic just to set it off and then a primer coat before you get in there with the paint and you'd be absolutely fine. Generally, I'm surprised it doesn't have any more strengtheners in here, um, but it doesn't, but it seems to all work. It's actually a really nice size, uh, the quality, things like that, it seems to be all good. The panel lines used to do that usual, they're sort of early trumpets are like down in here, they sort of fade. They're there and then just fade or things like that. There is a noticeable sink mark just around the back here. Catch it in the light, you can see just see a little bit of a sink mark down in here. Again, there's no real reason for it being here, but it's quite clear to see it's there. Uh, again, but generally, because it's one piece, you would think that the molding goes a little bit off like just down in here for instance you can probably see the seam line running down the side here from the side mold coming in it is pretty noticeable and large but let's face it kitty hawk still do that today um, and this kit is obviously a lot older okay so into the nose section we have a look and uh, really it's the same story a little bit nicer on this one to be honest we've got some nice details down in this cockpit area you say it's all recessed quite nice indeed you know the fan blades are a little bit basic and on the underside there we see some nice details nothing really going on the inside with any of this at the moment because it is what it is okay but yeah it gives you an idea of the size of this lump is going to be massive okay so 
now we can get into some bags. So starting off down in here, we've actually got a wing section. So I'm gonna have a quick look in here. Okay, through all the bags. Okay, so as you can see, We've got top and lower wing sections. We assume we're going to get a mixed bag in here. But, you know, when you're looking around at it, you probably tell it's actually not too bad at all. Some very nice details down in here. Really nice. All these access ports on the underside. Beautifully renditioned. Right the way through. All the different sizing. Various areas down on here. And on the top part of the wing, again, actually it doesn't look too bad probably because of the scale in 70 second these are huge great size of your thumb panel lines but you know you're going to forgive it it's there and again it's all pretty much it's early trumpeter that's the only thing i will say if you've ever you know if you know me and you've been following me a while you'll know the older stuff and the newer stuff this is pretty much the old stuff but as you can see it's all literally here this is that tail section you can see all the parts on there just like that, no problem. It's got a little bit of flash on it. It's a little bit, you know, funny. Nice touch down in here inside of one of these Bombays. Uh, nice riveting detail down in there. It's all flush. There's no ejector pin marks all over it, which is a really nice touch. So they've managed to bang it out of the mold with no real problems on there. And there's the other one as well. You can probably catch those in the light. Really nice. Some areas on this one. Right. Okay, so we're going to have a, a match on one side and then not quite so which I'm amazed, I thought we would. So that wing section is just gonna be the same as the other for the other side. But as you can see, crash. You can see probably just down in here, we've got some very, very nice parts down in here. So running around on the close up, you can see this is the engine intakes. This is all those flaps and all those areas, as you might imagine for the control surfaces right the way along those sort of glove areas down there you can probably see the shine on this this is release agent but it's totally dry so i'm not that worried about it okay so again not too bad not too shoddy and because it is what it is and it's multiple parts um the build shouldn't be too long because you know once you've done one the second one's always a lot easier to do so forth and so on okay all right so Okay, a couple more just down in here. So down in here we've got various subsections for the cockpit, we've got the gear, the things like that down all on this one here. Um, generally again, I can't really find any fault with it at all, especially because of its age. I thought I'd be pulling this apart um, quite extensively, but actually this isn't too bad at all. And some very nice details down in here on such a large kit. When you compare this to something like, let's face it, um, Revell's, um, you know, B1 in the bigger scales, in the 48 scales, things like that. This one's just on a par with the detail straight out of the back. And again, these bays, got no ejector pins in there, which is quite a nice touch. And to be honest, the ejector pins are, are a little bit all over. We've got some that are slightly raised and some recessed, but there's no real gnarly ones you think, oh God, that's going to be a pain to sand and do. So that's a nice thing. It's obviously they've sort of turned the corner at this point. But again, you can probably see on these, really very nice indeed. And if we shuffle our lower way through them, you can see that actually, I, you know, this is one of those kits where I thought it would be a lot worse than it actually is. You know, I thought we were going to be into that thing of, you know, some of the details. And actually to start off, and considering you're not really going to see much of it, this area down here for the cockpit's got some nice details on that. And we're hoping to find a little bit of photo etch when we get a little bit deeper into the, the sprues. And as I say, I can't remember sprues for this one. 19 screws, so there's quite a lot going down in here. It gives you an idea of the wingspan of this thing. Okay, tailplanes, anyone? <laughs> Fantastic. So that's literally just the tailplanes. You know, it's the size of a, I don't know, 48 scale Hunter. Okay, so the bombs, or I should say cruise missiles, to be precise, and the rotary bomb base system and its clampages, and all these different areas like that, no problem at all. Top of the actual, one of the weapons bays, and this is the actual, uh, for the swing wing pivot points, uh, these big locating areas as well, which hopefully will negate some of the droop you might get on such a large kit, because it does worry me that there isn't much going on. And again, the louver door system down in here for these intakes, very smoothly done, nice, no problem at all. It's actually pretty good, this. Same again for the other side, basically it's a match pair, because you're just going to be spinning it over 
and flipping it on this one. So a slight difference on this one. Okay. Right, okay, so down in here, we assume we have another two which are going to be a match pair again. Okay, so we only need to really look at one. And then, so just down in here, we've got the actual more cruise missiles, the nozzles, we've got the afterburner rings, all the various little parts you might imagine on sprue K here. So again, not too bad at all. To be honest, I think this will be a beautiful kit once done. And again, I wouldn't let it put you off because of its size and everything else like that, because let's face it, if you're gonna be doing something like this, you know what you're in for. Um, and they call it the Swan. It's got a beautiful in-flight, you can see here with the wings out. I know a lot of ones, you know, I'm doing the Tomcat at the moment, sweep the wings back, speed the heat. No, actually, there's something more graceful with the wings spread on this one. Very, very nice indeed. So again, match pair with these as well. So we've got more, so we've got four of these, obviously four engines, four lots of missiles, various things down in there as well. So we've got all of those, that's looking good. Last up, we get a box. Just in here. Look at that, massive box. And what do you get in it? That, okay. So, clear parts. Obviously quite important on a model like this, the clearer the part, and I have to say, that's actually very good. I'm quite happy with that. Really very nice clear parts. Not too much wobble or distortion. So you're gonna see some like nice cockpit detail in there. And we've got the lights, the various other things just like that. Okay. The gear, we're talking about it. So we've got a bag for the nose gear, the main, and obviously the actual uh, push rods on those. Tires, we're talking about, shall we have a look at a a quick look at a tyre. So multiple tyres, as one might imagine. Hard, plastic, so actually that's not too bad, or rubber I should say. So it's no problem to sand these. So I'd sand these with a medium sanding stick, buff them down and then polish them up afterwards. They'll be good to go, no problem at all. So as you might imagine, you've got, what was it, six, uh, six, 12, 14 tyres is there on this particular bird? Something else like that. So very nice indeed so then down in here we've got uh, a little bit of uh, film quite old-fashioned way of doing it now but thing is you're not going to see it from the panel the way it's looking but to be honest you've actually got quite a nice little bit of photo etch as well which again never going to see it but hey how you know it's there so we've got the ejection pull handles and then obviously we've got the um, angle of attack and pitos things like that photo etch as well and there you have it i have to say Considering its age, 2005 Trumpeter, we all remember like late 90s Trumpeter, you know, the famous Riveter who had like a massive sledgehammer and a punch and brruh, brruh. This one is actually quite refined. It's one of the better ones actually for this particular, for the scale of it, maybe a little bit over the top if I'm honest. It's got a little bit of flash, things like that in there, but generally you can forgive it because it is what it is. It's a blackjack in one seventy second, and that's something to get really excited about. And if you're building it, the problems you're going to have about where you're going to put it once you've built it, trying to fit it in your spray booth, and just generally the amount of room it's going to take up is going to be your biggest hurdle with this bomber. But let's face it, if you're doing Russian 172nd scale stuff like this, you've probably got the room to it, you've probably got the spray booth to do it, and you're not going to worry about it. Small concerns, if I'm honest, as I say, alignment, it's modular, and just looking at it, it looks like they don't go together. So you're going to be want to do, in, as I said, plenty of dry fitting. Don't get anywhere near glue until you're happy with it. 10 minutes spent dry fitting, sanding, getting the alignment right, saves you hours worth of filling, rescribing, sanding and all things like that afterwards okay so that makes it you know going to be a little bit of a handful to do it but I don't think it's anything completely over the top level of detail really happy with it I think there's good start in there you wouldn't have to you know think about too much extras in there from this point of view it is an external type of model it's a shame you're going to lose some of the detail to be honest the bomb base are probably one of the most detailed ones of the entire kit that you don't really going to see it because unless you've got a mirror under it or you're going to display it on its back you're not going to be able to see those unfortunately but it is nicely done it is nicely renditioned in there uh, and generally it's just what it is it's a 70 second scale um, you know 160 beautiful aircraft in real life go off see some youtube videos of it get inspired and everybody will want to build one of these will i be building it to be honest it's probably something that i would do on a no i've got nothing to do for a month rather than just say i need to build it now purely because of its size and where to put it but it is one of those that is definitely going to live in my stash now and i'll get around to doing it one day so there we go that is trumpeter's beautiful 172nd tu160 blackjack